A model steam engine test plant, part 13. Selecting a suitable water valve for the upper tank and making a connector to fit an old number 2 injector. I bought two types of steam valves as I wish to change the existing ones on the boiler which are too small. This episode includes my recent draw of shame, which I think is due to the drugs that I'm taking. I bought a selection of quarter by 40 globe valves from my friend Chris English. I need to use one of these valves to connect to the injector, and here is the injector, it's new old stock, they don't paint them red anymore. The red colour will be a contrast to the black and copper look of the plant. This is the larger of the two types of valves that I bought, I will try this first and see what it looks like. It needs to connect to the water inlet of the injector, pretty much like this. In order to fit these two parts together, I need to make an adapter sleeve. I'm not going to show the construction of this because it's very simple. It's a piece of brass with a hole drilled in the centre, threaded quarter by 40. Once again, I would like to talk about scale. In my opinion, this tap is miles too big for the injector. This smaller tap, which is almost identical to the ones fitted to the boiler as steam outlet taps, looks far better with this small injector. In my opinion, these steam valves on the boiler, the original ones, really do look incredibly wrong. These valves are threaded quarter by 40 to accommodate 5 30 seconds of an inch diameter pipe. Once again, it's only my opinion, but I think it would have been much better to use 5 16 by 32 valves for 3 16 pipe. For the application that I need this boiler plant for, it doesn't really matter. It's just for test running steam engines on the bench. I removed the valves and I discarded the rubber washer underneath the centre one. When I fit the new larger steam taps, if I want them to face in a different direction, I'll be using the correct selection of copper shim washers. Here's one of the new larger valves still in its packet, and the physical size of this suits the boiler much better in my opinion. It's still quarter by 40, but I can't have everything. This valve needs to face towards the back of the boiler, I've left the union nut in place so I can grab that with the spanner so I can rotate the valve into the position I want it to be in. I was really lucky with the first valve, it didn't need any shim washers. Although I haven't shown it, I removed the valve, coated it with Loctite 542 and refitted it. The other steam valve in the centre did need a shim washer. I coated it in Loctite 542 and here I'm screwing it in place. All I need to do now is to remove the original union nut and refit the one on the pipe. As always, I'm using my small Barco spanner, but not all adjustable spanners are equal, and the well-engineered spanner with its wide jaws never marks or damages the union nuts. Here's a flashback to the boiler that I bought second-hand from a customer. And here is a shot of the boiler with the new taps fitted. Personally, I think these look much better and I also like the safety valve that I fitted too. I made the thread adapter very quickly, and here I'm fitting it to the steam tap and to the injector. It's very similar to the adapter that I made to take the second check valve. It's a lesser diameter and much more in scale with the job. This steam tap has a hexagon bit on the end, so I can use the spanner to tighten it into the boiler bush. This is the original overflow pipe that was fitted to the injector. I've removed it and I'm going to fit another piece which is longer and I'm going to bend it so it directs the water flow into the lower tank. If I use it as it is, it will miss the tank entirely. It's just one of those things. I could have offset the tank so it wasn't in the middle, but I didn't want to do that. I thought it would look wrong. I'm using the screwdriver to illustrate how the overflow would miss the lower tank entirely. I found a piece of PM Research 3 16 of an inch diameter brass tube, conveniently threaded 3 16 by 40 on the end to match the injector. I carefully bent it in the vise using a soft hammer, and this is what it looks like. When I build all these steam engines, boiler plants and bits and pieces, I generally get the job right first time, but not in this case. Introducing my draw of shame, let me explain. After careful measuring, I fitted the tank and the pump in place, and then I made a short piece of pipe to go from the pump to the check valve. My friend Andrew has a drawer of shame, and people said, shouldn't it be drawer? And I mentioned it to Andrew, who laughed and said, no, it's a mistake. 
I'm not the only one with a dry sense of humour. Here's take one. The outlet pipe from the pump to the check valve is 3 sixteenths of an inch in diameter, and the first piece I bent wrong. And to be honest, it was nowhere near. It was too short at both ends. I'll move on to take two. I cut another piece of pipe, cleaned up the ends and silver-soldered unions onto it. And it still wasn't right, so I moved on to take three. This attempt was slightly better, and it nearly fitted, but the longer part that goes to the check valve wasn't long enough. Thankfully, take four was successful. Take three was nearly right, but the bend at the check valve end really jumped out at me. The good thing was, though, it was close, so I used it as a template to bend up another one. This time it was the definitive perfect fit. Why was I having such a bad day? My theory is it's the drugs that I'm taking. I'm currently taking some tablets that affect my hormones, to say the least, and it's making me do things like this. My calibrated eye is being affected. But after only four attempts, I got it perfectly right. Thankfully, this does not happen very often. Now it's time to test the water tank. What I'm looking for are leaks, so I'm trying not to splash the water everywhere. If there's any water in the lower tank, I have a problem, but thankfully there isn't. This number two injector is new old stock from quite a long while back. Blackgate's engineering are no longer at this address. This piece of card that you get with the injector shows what to connect where. Water in at the bottom, overflow at the bottom, steam in at the right hand side and steam out at the left hand side. I'm not sure if the cones are removable on a number two. You can remove them very easily on a number four injector for cleaning. And while the injector's in this state, it's very important that you don't lose them. I can't test the overflow with both ends of the injector open. So I simultaneously blocked up both ends with a short piece of silicone rubber pipe. When I open the valve, water starts to run from the upper tank into the lower tank via the injector's overflow. And as you can see, it's going down, albeit quite slowly, but that's okay. When the injector's working, it comes out a lot faster. To show the water drop in the tank, as the top tank drains into the bottom tank via the injector's overflow, the video is running at 400%. And the noise you can hear is me actually pumping the water into the boiler from the lower tank at a very high speed, thanks to the miracle of video editing. This is my transfer punch set, and I use one of these to make the marks in the baseboard where the tank and pump assembly is going to be. I drilled some eighth of an inch diameter holes and bolted the parts through into the wood, using four BA bolts which cut their own thread perfectly in a one eighth of an inch diameter hole. Finally, as a punishment to myself, I'm showing one more time the mess I made of just making a simple pipe fitting to go from the pump to the check valve. Maybe I should stick to music. Looking on the bright side, the drugs that I'm taking finish at the end of July 2024. That's it for this one. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.